Well, what we've seen already in the short life of the blockchain world is booms and busts. We are very early. We are very early. And when you're early into a new technology, this is not only a monetary system, but it's really a new technology, a new platform. In the early days, expect booms and busts. And what I analyze as we're going through the bust side of that roller coaster is how fragile or anti-fragile the ecosystem is. For example, May a year ago, we went through a crash. I mean, Bitcoin was it would be considered a crash. Right. Uh, Bitcoin was cut in half, as and other uh, crypto assets were cut by more than that. And I was fascinated to watch the DeFi ecosystem through all of that because what I thought was going on was there was a lot of leverage. Is when you talk about speculation and mania, what happens is speculators are taking on leverage in order to capitalize on this boom, they don't even understand what it is. Some of the later ones getting in, they just know that their friend said, no, you got to get in. It's been going up. And then you have a crash and a shakeout. Last May, when that happened to DeFi, I thought that was a very important moment for DeFi, not maybe NFTs yet, but DeFi and for Bitcoin, because the DeFi ecosystem did not skip a beat. There were millions of people wiped out because they had taken on leverage. All they were doing was speculating. Mm -hmm. And yet the smart contract to operating system effectively didn't skip a beat. It did not break down. That was very important. You're going to see uh, some of these blockchains flame out over time. So we are in the process of natural selection when it comes to these ecosystems. So fully expect there to be booms and busts. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency prices have recovered in recent weeks, climbing from February lows. The Bitcoin price has broken back above $40,000 per Bitcoin as traders welcome the Federal Reserve's steady approach to raising rates and despite the looming threat of increased regulation. Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Solana, and Cardano have also rallied, with recent challengers Terra's Luna and Avalanche making outsized gains. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, ARK Fund CEO Kathy Wood updates about Bitcoin volatility and recent crashes. Kathy has been known to make some highly criticized forward-looking predictions. Wood and her colleagues have some of the higher price targets on Wall Street for Bitcoin. Recently, Kathy Wood made an optimistic price prediction for Bitcoin, giving the crypto a price target of $400,000. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. There are three revolutions taking place simultaneously right now. One is a money revolution. One is a a financial services revolution, and one is a next generation internet revolution. Uh, So on the money revolution, Bitcoin and and Ether to some extent, but Bitcoin, surely it is the most secure network out there, um, is the first, and each one of these words is really important, the first global, private, decentralized, a monetary system ever invented. And it is going to have profound ramifications. Just ask the people in El Salvador. And uh, recently, President Bukele of El Salvador uh, had a conversation with President Erdogan of Turkey because they are going through a currency crisis. And so I think the emerging markets are going to adopt uh, this kind of monetary system increasingly because their own monetary systems uh, very dependent often on the dollar or on the euro or someone else who does not control uh, the population they want to they they would prefer not to be dependent on politicians this doesn't involve politicians uh, so that's the monetary revolution and we think that um, it's going to proliferate faster Uh, Emerging markets are very interested, uh, except for China, of course. Uh, They're interested in making the digital yuan uh, the reserve currency of Asia. 
Uh, and that's fully controlled by people. Uh, what I'm discussing is not. Uh, the second revolution is in the financial services industry. We do believe that DeFi, decentralized finance, is going to usurp the role of most f- financial services companies today. Most financial services companies are middlemen, and DeFi takes the middlemen out of the equation. You know, in the early early days, some of uh, some of your viewers may know of Lending Club, and it took uh, some middlemen out of the equation, was able to offer higher uh, rates to savers and lower rates uh, to borrowers, and became very, very popular very quickly. Well, put that on steroids. That's what we have going on in DeFi. And again, it's a global movement. All of these are global. They are not... Um, they're not being governed by any particular nationality. Now, regulators have uh, are now turning their sights on yes. DeFi <laughs> pretty aggressively. You saw in the chart how, uh, you know, at least once a month, twice a month in the last year, a regulator somewhere around the world has said, hey, we've got to investigate this. And, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I think in the United States, my, my observation is that regulators want to pr- protect the, the little guy, the average investor, uh, that's their mandate. And that's good. Uh, prevent uh, frauds and, and, and other such things. Uh, and, and yet I also found regulators not wanting to be blamed for preventing, at least here in the U.S., from participating in the next big thing, the next big internet. We have an ethos of innovation in this country. Uh, interestingly, even though it seems today that investors are running away from it, uh, you know, it's kind of the opposite of the tech and telecom bubble when they were falling all over themselves. That was a dream. This is the reality and they're running away. Uh, but regulators want to encourage innovation. So I think uh, putting guardrails around is going to be a good thing for everyone. In a broad sense, we have never been uh, like this moment in history in terms of the amount of change that is about to, it's already started. We feel the ground, as you just said, shifting underneath us. It has already started, you know, five major innovation platforms evolving at the same time. You have to go back to the early 1900s to see anything like it. You had three platforms then. You had telephone, electricity, and automobile. Today, you have DNA sequencing, uh, you heard it on the conference, DNA sequencing, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies, all of them are in exponential growth trajectories, and they are converging with one another in massively important ways and profound ways. And they're going to deliver, we believe, if you just take a look at the technologies themselves, over the next 10 years, uh, we believe uh, the the market cap associated with these five platforms and the 14 underlying technologies is going to scale at a 30% compound annual rate of return. These are astonishing rates of return. And if you're if you're a, a good stock picker, you'll probably do even better than that if you're focused only on innovation. It is going to change for two reasons uh, beyond the environmental concerns. Uh, one, the technologies are ready, the kind of battery technology, artificial intelligence, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, robotics. Those three, actually, that's a convergence taking place in the transportation field, whether you're talking about autonomous vehicles, ultimately, or drones for parcels or food delivery and so forth. So yes, you're absolutely right. These worlds are, the digital and the physical world finally are converging because the technology is ready and just as important, the costs are low enough. The costs were prohibitively high before, uh, especially when it came to electric vehicle sort of battery technology. But thanks to Elon Musk, and I would say also to the Chinese who are moving very quickly in this direction, uh, that is no longer true. In fact, the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle, most people don't know this, is lower today than that for a gas-powered vehicle. Most people just look at the sticker price, yep. and we think in, in two years that they, they will be the same price. And then a few years after that, uh, we believe that electric vehicles will be 
30% plus lower in price. So these cost declines continue in emerging technologies, whereas the internal combustion engine is a very mature technology. So it is not in lo- uh, enjoying any more cost declines. They ended a long time ago. One of the most notorious forward-looking price targets from Kathy Wood ended up coming true and proving naysayers wrong. Wood predicted in 2018 that Tesla shares would hit $4,000, which at the time was among the highest public targets. Tesla shares hit a split-adjusted $4,000 in January 2021. Also, interest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Solana, and Cardano have surged over the last few months as inflation fears engulf investors. In the U.S., prices have increased by 7.9% in the year through February, the highest rate of inflation in 40 years. However, Kathy's Bitcoin price prediction requires Bitcoin to break out of its current niche. For Bitcoin's price to take off, it needs to graduate from its strong correlation to the Kathy Wood crowd and high-priced, high-tech equities. Bitcoin's price has moved in tandem with technology stocks over the last two years as lockdowns and COVID stimulus measures pushed up prices. So, do you agree with Kathy's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.